do you think Bart's a bit too dogmatic on certain nutritional things like not one carb, not one gram of carb ever? Or do you um, uh, generally agree with him he's right on the money? I would say on the thing, do you require any carbohydrates? No, zero is required. Can you tolerate some level of carbohydrates? That's a different question altogether. Yes, you can. And you and that will vary between people. Can you tolerate eggs? That will vary between people. Can you tolerate milk? That will vary between people. Can you tolerate a lot of things that were seafood? Some people can tolerate it on even a carnival, carnival diet. Some can't for a whole lot of reasons. So there are so many variables. Um, and I think Bart would agree with me on that, that, yeah, is can you produce all the glucose you require? Yes, you don't need to have even one gram you don't need to consume. Having a small amount from dairy, is it going to kill you? No. Is it going to be a problem? No. Is it optimal? Probably not. Um, you know, is it going to is it going to cause you any issues? No, a major. If you've basically got a high clearance in that regard, you're like the Maasai. You're physically active. You have two glasses of milk that probably give you basically about you get about. Um, all up, probably about 18, 17, yep. 18 grams of, of, of sugar. Yep. You're still going to be in ketosis, low-grade ketosis. Most of that is going to go to glycogen anyway. So it just means you're going to produce less through gluconeogenesis. And it's also a lower deuterium-type source of sugar as well. You know, As I've said, there are sugars and sugars. You know, They can start from the 140 odd right up to the 160 odd you know and milk sugar is at that bottom sort of level so it's not a big thing and as long as you're only getting a very small amount your body can there's enough enzymes there to basically through the Krebs cycle to, rem, to um, deplete sufficient deuterium it's not an issue because most of the other stuff are all long chain saturates which are basically low in deuterium which is fine um so it's a so it's a, a very much a, a non a non issue. Now, obviously, if you were to basically be jug, um, you know, consuming like liters and liters every day, um, that definitely could be an issue. You know, you're definitely not being ketosis. Let's put it that way. Even low grade ketosis and low grade ketosis is a good thing to basically be swinging in and out. This sort of that's what you really want. You don't want to be in ketosis continuously, but you don't want to be, you know, in growth continually either. Not a good thing. Your body's supposed to do that. You're supposed to basically eat a lot of animal foods, um, and those animal foods basically push up anabolic pathways, but not a lot. Remember, the insulin to glucagon regulates that tight how much? As long as glucagon is slightly elevated to basically provide gluconeogenesis, and it's not being closed off because of too much sugar. So there's only, let's say, 20 grams or um, in the system. That's not enough to inhibit glucagon So, or to raise insulin too high because the threshold hasn't been achieved. It's too low, the amount of circulating sugar in the system. You know, and what happens is insulin just won't rise much. Actually, it'll rise more in regards to things like certain amino acids like leucine then a very small amount of sugar you know because that's normal indicated because you have the influx and outflux when you basically the body sometimes always will generate slightly like the dawn effect where it raises blood sugar slightly insulin does not go up sugar goes up because traditionally normally as a human you'd go out for the hunt if insulin rose, it would blunt any further gluconeogenesis and also blunt um, the ability to basically utilize that energy to go out for the hunt. You just feel lethargic. Yep. And you have to get up. Yeah, go ahead. Sugary, pre, sugary pre-workouts, pre-workouts are nonsensical. <laughs> no, 
there is it, like it actually gives you less energy. <laughs> exactly, but the body, the body will, you know, unless it hits a certain threshold. This is where the glucagon, insulin sort of net, um, axis is important that a lot of people miss because that basically is a regulator to in order because it knows that you still need glucose for certain functions but you don't want to cut it off when nothing's coming much into the from the diet so you have to get uh, over a certain threshold of intake you know and that can vary between people depending on genetics some people can tolerate you know and still stay ketose up to 25 grams others up to 50 and others can still have a very low grade being a low carbohydrate state where they sh slip in and out up to 80 above that m most people will basically be kicked out completely out of ketosis for a couple of days if they get over that sort of level if they keep on eating that sort of stuff every day at those levels and we've seen it with basically salad boy recently in his blood works um you know it's already showing that it's contraindicated all his bullshit and I, I knew that that would happen because basically these people were only having a seasonal, um, uh, you know, honey and stuff like that. Not every day. It's just nonsense. Even Mary Ruddock saw that with the um, the Hudza. They were just seasonally, you know, they didn't bother in the other periods. It's just absolute nonsense. Just basically he just wants to sell a product. <sighs> yeah, it's ridiculous. But the reality is when it comes to carbohydrates, not one gram is required. Your body can create its own um, in terms of uh, glucose, but small amounts will they be um, ne have a negative effect? No, nah, not really. Um, the, the small amounts you can still tolerate a certain amount in that regard. 